So what conation, when we introduce it to students and we bring it into the classroom, we always start with explaining that there are three parts of the mind. And all of us, most of us, are very familiar with the cognitive piece of the mind. This houses all of our knowledge, what we've learned, our training, our experiences, our skills. And um, to a little bit of a lesser extent, we're also familiar with the affective piece of our mind, which houses our emotions our values, how we feel, what motivates us, how do we motivate our students, um, which is an important thing in education. Um, but to a much lesser extent, we're familiar with the conative piece. And this is the little definition here from the internet says is an inclination to act purposefully. So these are our striving instincts. These are instincts that we're born with that are innate that define our natural behavioral talents. So um, I like to think of them with the, the figures I have here. The cognitive defines what we think, the affective defines how we feel, but the conative defines what we will actually do in um, a situation where we need to make an important decision or we're trying to solve an important problem. So um, I'd like to do a quick activity. Let's look at our cognitive skills and we'll test those against our instinctive skills if we could. So what I'd like you guys to do as a group is to read the words. Ignore the colors, just read the words. This is purely cognitive. Um, we've all learned how to read. And um, to read them together as quickly as we can, sort of in a rhythm. Um, ignore the colors, just read the words. You guys ready? Play along. Okay, so let's start. Red, red, blue, white, yellow, green, pink, red, green, white, purple, red, green, pink, green, orange, red, blue, red, green, red, pink. Perfect. Um, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. And I knew this was a very smart group, and so I had no doubts that you would get through that quickly. And um, But now, let's flip it, and let's try to tap into your instincts. And so this time, I want you to... Just read the colors. Ignore the words. Our instincts are drawn to color. Okay? Are you ready? Okay. Pink. Pink, yellow, blue, red, pink, green, yellow, red, pink, blue, red, It's good. It's good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> That was good. That was, that was pretty good, actually. It's, it's very tough, and I've never been with a group that could do the whole thing, and obviously you guys are a very intelligent group, so this doesn't speak to that. But it, what it does say is that we do have um, a harder time allowing our instincts to take the forefront of our decision-making process. Um, now, there is one group of people who is really good at this, can read the words, can read the colors, switch back and forth without any problem. Can any of you guess who that might be who don't already know the answer? Our children, children, children um, who have just learned to read. So they really are still very in touch with their instincts, but have learned to also read the words, so knew the cognitive piece. Um, and I didn't mention that initially, but the, the three parts of the mind, which we'll review here real quickly, the cognitive piece is the only piece that is unchanging. So if you start to think about how you are, and you may feel like... Um, you know, you've always been this way, and it's true because you always will be that way. And so what introducing conation and talking about these things to our students, what it helps to do is sort of validate who we are and allow students to just be happy being themselves and using those innate strengths rather than wishing <clears throat> that you were more organized or more innovative or more whichever. You can just go ahead and be yourself. Um, so as a quick review, uh, Affective, that's when we're trying to figure out how to motivate our students or if we want to put teams together that uh, get along or care the same about the project that they're working on. Those are affective means. Um, cognitive, we may also use that in building teams to make sure that we have a good cognitive balance. But now we're also introducing conation to build a good mix of talents and strengths on our teams. So how we do this is we use a, what is called a Colby assessment. It's an online assessment. It takes about 20 minutes and it gives results along four action modes. The first action mode is the fact finder action mode and this defines how we naturally gather and share information or what is our instinct to probe. So someone who is an insistent fact finder will have a strong need to do a lot of research and learn all of the facts before moving forward with a project or making a decision. Um, the second mode is the follow through mode and this is our need to arrange and design, our instinct to pattern, to plan, to organize. Um, so if someone insistent in this mode uh, needs to plan 
things out, organize, be prepared in that manner before moving forward with something comfortably. Um, the third mode is the quick start mode, and this is how we handle risk and uncertainty. So um, this is our instinct to innovate. People who are insistent in this mode are your idea people, who are constantly coming up with new ways to solve existing problems. And finally, we have the implementer mode, so the, the fourth action mode, which defines how we handle space and tangibles, our need to demonstrate. So people who are insistent in this mode have a need to build with their hands, use physical models to learn and to teach and to communicate. Um, people who are insistent in implementer modes do better talking face-to-face -face rather than communicating through email. So these are um, hands-on kind of people. Within the last, I'm going to say 10 years or so, um, higher education and engineering in particular has been starting to embrace the idea of using this to form effective teams and to increase re retention and persistence in engineering. And that's what uh, Tom and I are doing, and Claire is going to be part of her dissertation. It's uh, really exciting and a lot of fun. And this is just a couple of examples of studies that have been done showing that it is effective. Um, so now I have put you guys will play along one more time. I have some just sheets of blank printer paper around the room. If everybody would do me a favor and grab one. So then with your eyes closed and no talking, um, fold your piece of paper, close your eyes, fold your piece of paper in half, no talking, fold your piece of paper in half, now fold it in half again, now fold it into a triangle, rip off the bottom right corner, okay, now once you've done that, unfold your paper, hold it up so everyone can see and open your eyes and look around at what we have in the room. <laughs> so what we see is that given the exact same set of instructions, everybody processed that information a little bit differently. Same? Um, well, and this is, this is part of why it's important to consider conation when we're putting together teams because people will naturally process information differently, will go about approaching tasks differently. And so um, by using this information and understanding this about ourselves and each other, we can build more effective and more productive teams. So when we get the results of a Colby A, it will give you, as I mentioned, results along these four action modes. And they're reported on a continuum running from number one to number 10. One through three, um, the top here, uh, represent resistant action modes. So up there, this is where if you score in the one, two, or three of any of those action modes, you're going to prevent problems from occurring through this action mode. Versus if you score on the insistent end, a 7 through 10, this is how you initiate solutions. This is how you naturally will try to solve problems. Um, and in the middle, those are mediator, facilitator action modes, and where if you fall in there, you are comfortable working on either end of the continuum. Um, so for example, my score is a 6, 8, 2, 4. So um, I initiate problems solutions through systematizing, planning, organizing. That's that's my go-to. And um, then I would follow that with my six in Fact Finder by getting enough information to be able to explain um, sufficiently what is going on and why I've approached it and the way I've approached it. My two in Quick Start is really important because I'm not, so I don't solve problems through quick starting, through improvising. What I do is I prevent problems from occurring um, because of chaos or too much quick start. But I work with a lot of quick starts and, um, and it works well because then we kind of balance each other. So <clears throat> this helps me to understand as a team member, what do I bring to the team? What can you count on me for? Then knowing this about my team members also allows me to be realistic in my expectations of other people um, and what they can bring to me. And rather than getting frustrated with them because they're not organized or because they keep bringing me new ideas, I can appreciate that as strengths that they're bringing to the team that I don't have. And one thing I really like to point out here is that there are 12 conative strengths. Every single one of these represents a strength. Each one of us only has four, which means we're missing 
two-thirds of those strengths, which is why we want to build complementary teams. Um, so when we put together teams, according to the Colby wisdom and how, how it works, uh, we really want to have most of our energy in the middle, in the responding, that'll work either way. So we don't have a lot of conflict. But we do want to have about a quarter of the energy in the resistant modes and in the insistent modes. And what we do to teach students how this works is we put them into teams. We put them into some teams that are naturally cognitively balanced so that we can give students, maybe for the first time in their lives, an opportunity to work on a team that's successful and productive and it feels good. Um, very often in education we get students, um, we graduate students who've never had a good teamwork experience. So this is a great opportunity to show people that teamwork can be productive and it can be fun and it can be healthy. Um, we also intentionally build teams with a lot of conflict to show that, look at you guys are all brilliant, but you can't get anything done. And then we can talk about why cognitively this is happening, um, that it's not all about how smart we are, um, but there are other things that, that are in play here. Um, so these are some of my students at ASU. And knowing that um, engineering requires a lot of action, a lot of teamwork, uh, we feel like Conation has been a valuable part of this. And some one of the semester projects was to build solar cars. They've done this here. We, here we built bridges out of spaghetti and newspapers. Um, over here they're building the marshmallow tower. So these are all team efforts. And um, using Conation, we've improved or at least seen a lot of satisfaction in teamwork from these guys. Um, this is an example from one of the peer evaluation forms at the end of the semester from one of my students on uh, talking about their solar car project. And they noted that I was, when they put their team together, I had some concerns about the, the Colby mix combination that they had. And so I gave them some tips, you know, these are problems you may run into, you built some conflict into your team, but I let them do it knowing that, you know, they wanted to. Um, and she noticed that um, it's interesting to see how some people complement each other in some areas, but clash in other areas, where these two particular students got along really well when they were putting together their proposal, um, because notice they have identical fact finder follow through MOs, which means that they think the same way. This is, they want to approach getting that part of the job done in the same manner. But when it came to building the actual car, they were clashing heavily, where one of them is, um, uh, insistent quick start. So this student wanted to change the design every time they came to class. Um, and the other one is an insistent implementer. So this student was the one who was actually building it and wanted to make sure that it was built high quality, well done, that there was enough time to do it right or not do it at all. So um, it's interesting to see, and that they pulled that from their Colby's. They learned from this experience. And these two were also really good friends. So um, it's just, it's nice to see that they got a lot out of this experience. Um, overall, with the solar car project, the students were very satisfied. Um, we had a little bit of unsatisfaction, maybe one team or something, but they, they really had a good time understanding how it was going to work and using Colby. Again, the peer evaluations, this is from the, the solar car project. We can see that this is how they rated each other. We had two teams that gave everybody excellence. At the very lowest end, we had just some ordinary, you know, but nobody in the marginal rating. So everybody was overall really happy with how they worked over the course of the semester. Um, and those are from my classes. And then I have one slide here. These are results from Tom's classes where he looked at, over the course of the semester, how much did trust among classmates increase? And we have here, this is a transportation class where they had just a standard lecture type class, no conation no even teamwork projects involved, versus uh, Tom's class, which has a lot of team projects throughout the semester and a conation module as well. And we can see what we're looking at here is the, from the, um, the blue to the red are, I don't know this person ratings um, from the beginning of the semester to the end of the semester. So we're looking for the blue line to shift by the end of the semester. Then from the beginning of, to the end of the semester, overall trust ratings from green to purple. So we can see that there's really no change in the traditional lecture-based class with no teamwork activities. But then in the class where we had conation module and a lot of uh, collaborative work, we can see shifts from how many students didn't know each other from the beginning of the semester to the end of the semester went down and trust moved up. So what we found is that, well, we really enjoy using it. I love using it. It helps me to create an engaging classroom. Um, I'm going to continue using it in all of my classes from here on out.